bless you and your families. Um, we're just here for another wonderful study and fellowship in the Lord. Uh, we, we love when we come together and speak on the word, the oracles of God, and what God is doing in our lives today to, to keep us and to grow us. Amen. Hallelujah. We're very thankful for that. So our mission is to collectively come together for Bible study as we get to know each other personally, building genuine godly relationships. Only then can we truly come to love one another as our Lord have commanded. Amen. First John 3, 23. And this is his command to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. That is his commandment, to believe in his son and to love one another. And this is that's um, how beautiful that is, because that's what we're going to be talking about today, is how we have to get to know Jesus so we can get to know love. A lot of us in the world, and I talk about myself as when, you know, I was in that world and that spirit was upon me. Somebody come up to me, give me a hug. I'd be fresh out of jail. Give me a whole bunch of drugs and a gun. And I said, thank you. Thank you for loving me. That was love. Showing me love. That is the wrong perception of love. In actuality, they were setting me up to send me back. <laughs> Amen. 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 They were setting me up. To, and, and then my dumb self, I didn't know no better because I grew up in the life that that's what we gravitated to, you know, the wrong spirit. So I, yeah, that's love. Showing me love. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. And actually, looking at it now from the spirit that God has put me back in perspective and still growing me, that is setting me up for failure big time. So that's just one of the things that we got to look at. When we have our encounter with love, and he fills us up with his spirit, then we will know how to love. This is not saying we're just going to get it and start learning a new way of something that, you know, we never done before. It takes time. And God is gradually working with us. God is gradually growing us and bringing us through. One of the things about, you know, when you come together with your, with your spouse and you become one is you go through things in a marriage, but not to run, to stand up and continue building together, continue just uh, walking together, continue loving together, and God is working the thing out in the spiritual realm to draw y'all nigh. And that's a beautiful thing. I love it. It's, it's definitely a beautiful thing. So as we come and have my wife pray us in, are you on? Yeah. Yes. Hold on. Amen. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we hear you loud and clear. Okay. Sorry, you guys. I, I'm just getting in, so I apologize for the hold up. Um, so you, I'm going to go ahead and pray us in and we'll get started. Welcome, everyone, um, to Iron Sharpens Iron. Glad to see everyone. Praise God. So, Father God, I just want to thank you. Thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for your mercy, for your grace. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's present on this evening, Lord. And I just thank you how you kept us. Lord, you kept us all day long, Lord. And Lord, we just come tonight, Lord, seeking a word, Lord. We come tonight, Lord, um, seeking to be sharpened in your word. Lord, we come tonight, Lord, um, asking that you speak to us, oh God. Speak to our hearts and to our minds, Father God. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your son, our Lord and Savior, Lord. We thank you. We just say, have your way tonight, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Speak to us on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I heard a word earlier that Jeremiah preached for 40 years and didn't save nobody. Hallelujah. It ain't about, you know, the number, but it's about being faithful to the call. Hallelujah. You never know. God gave people so many chances and he got somebody he he used. He got somebody he could point to that preached to you for 40 years and you didn't get it. You didn't listen because you didn't get it. And you didn't listen. You didn't want to get it. Hallelujah. So we're thankful to be here today. But let's look at this man right here. We titled this word all talk and no walk. Remember, we need to encounter love so we can know how to walk with our talk. Amen. This man right here, let's start at first at, at, at John 1 starting at chapter one through nine. And let's kind of read and break it down so we can understand this. A lot of people stumble up on here, but let's get a clear, accurate picture and account of what's going on. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Jesus. He is the word. 
and the word was with God and Jesus was with God and the word was God. So not only was Jesus with the father, but the father said that Jesus also was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Who we're talking about, the word. The same was in the beginning with God, the father. All things were made through him, talking about the word, Jesus, and without him was not anything made that was made. Remember, Jesus is the only one begotten of the father. Everybody else was made through Jesus. Hallelujah. And was Amen. not anything made that was made that was made. Wasn't anything made without Jesus. Hallelujah, brother. You hear that? Yes, sir. God bless you, brother. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is his cousin, John the Baptist. Six months. Gabriel came to John the Baptist, and then he came to Joseph and Mary. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. So John was sent ahead of Jesus and that, you know, to proclaim the one who was coming, his cousin, that if all men believe, you know, on Jesus, the light. He was not the light, talking about John, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which light of every man that cometh in the world. Every man that cometh in the world, the true light, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. People born again in the Lord, you born again of Jesus Christ. Remember, he said, I go away, and my Father is going to send you the comforter in my name. Hallelujah. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God and to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah. So that power you're going to receive is you're going to receive the comforter of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For believing on his name. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. That's beautiful right there. Came to his own. This is talking about Israel. He came walking on foot down to the, down to the Jews, down to the synagogue. He came to his own, but his own received him not. Remember, they rejected him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Anybody got anything you want to say so far on that? You know, I can keep going. Hallelujah. I love it. <laughs> Just thank God for the Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now we have established that Jesus is the true light. He was with the Father from the beginning. The Father manifested Jesus to us. Hallelujah. It was such a, a beautiful thing for the apostles. When they seen Jesus coming and they knew he was manifested from the Father, that was a beautiful thing. Don't let people trip you up out here, you hear me? Don't nobody know of the Father, only Jesus. Jesus was in the bosom of the Father. So you got people that's talking about they don't believe in Jesus and it's just the Father. They don't even know the Father. Jesus know him, <laughs> but we don't know him. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we get in this word right here, let's look right here. Let's look at John 16 and 7 and 9. This is interesting right here. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, just as Jesus. It is expedient for you, which means beneficial, that I go away. For if I not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and of sin because they believe not on me. Hallelujah. So we see Jesus telling his apostles that it's beneficial that he go away so they can receive the comforter. He's coming to us in another form. He's coming to us in another form. Hallelujah. Amen. Didn't he say the prince was coming? Huh? Didn't he say the prince would be coming as well in that same verse? No, uh, no. The prince? No? Uh, no, no. Okay. I think I know the verse you're talking about when he said he had to go now. Because the yeah. prince of this world, which is Satan, was coming. <laughs> oh, was, oh, okay. Was with him, right. He got God yeah. on right. Amen. So this is powerful right here because we're establishing that we must receive of the Holy Ghost so we could be able to perform what Jesus wants us to perform. We can't perform what the Lord wants us to perform without the power of Christ. Because in our own understanding, we operate different. 
Remember what the Lord told him, my ways is not your ways. My ways is higher mm -hmm. than your ways. You know what I mean? So we have to get to the point where we receive of the spirit, just like Jesus was saying, it's beneficial that I go away. If I go away, I'm going to send the comforter unto you. We need that comforter. Amen. He's going to be the one that's going to be proven and correcting people. It ain't going to be me, even though it looks like me, but it's him in you, in the spirit. That's what yeah. we're correcting and doing all the work. Hallelujah. Amen. We see, we see that. Anybody, anybody got anything they want to say towards that? No, I can, I can relate. I can relate to that as well, as far as just leaning on my understanding and not his understanding. Every time I try to do things my way, it always ends up awry, and then I have to start all over and and and, and just let him let go and let God in a sense, you know. Right, 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 right. And let him take control. Amen. I heard that, my brother. Amen. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Anybody, anybody else? No, I love I love the scripture because we got to get to know Jesus for ourselves. This is a personal walk, personal walk. If you end up trying to get to know Jesus through somebody else and they end up steering you and leading you the wrong way, then we can't cry wolf. Look right here in the Apostles' Doctrine. Look right here at John and 1 John at 1. That which was from the beginning, remember we was talking about Jesus, remember? Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, he said. We have looked upon him and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the father and was manifested unto us. So you mean to tell me the word of life was with the father and the father manifested him to them? This is the apostle John speaking. Hallelujah. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and your fellowship truly is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is how we must get our relationship for ourselves. You got somebody tricking you. The word just told us that Jesus, the word of life, they handled him with their hands and he was manifested from the Father. Remember Isaiah 57, 15, I dwell in a high and holy place with him also, which is of a contrite heart and humble spirit, ready to revive the spirit of the contrite one and revive the heart of the, of the spirit of the contrite one. So that's, that's important for us to know. It's many times in the scripture that the Father is letting us know that Jesus is there with him. Many times in the scripture where Jesus is letting us know that he was with the Father and he's going back to him. Amen. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. And it's just just doing your own homework, your own research, your own your own studying. You know, when when you go to church and the pastor says something, you always want to fact find and just do your own your own work. You know what I'm saying? Man, amen. So I I, I I can relate to that as well, and uh, just being knowledgeable and knowing knowing the word. You know, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Absolutely. Yeah, I was always the type of person I hear something and not until I could substantiate it with the word will I take it in and deposit it. So if somebody say something, I'm not going to discredit you, but I'm not going to deposit it into my spirit and into my understanding until I can validate it, until I can substantiate it. Yes, Amen. yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Anybody? But I like this. I like this scripture though, you know, and uh, I, it's real, you know, all talk and no walk. Just, you know, a lot of people preach the word and say and say this and say that, but when it comes down to it, are they really just living how they're talking? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's something, that's something, even my, my, me, myself, I'm guilty of it as well. And, and, and so that's something I've been finding lately, you know, getting back to the basics and just, and just, uh, falling back into the word and um, doing my own homework again, you know, just, just reading, reading, reading the Bible and, and uh, being around like-minded people. Me and you had to talk the other day, not to get too personal, but we had to talk as far as just leaving 
old old um, people behind leaving. You know, you can't if you used to be this, then you can't go back and and hang around these people and think that that, that you're going to get them to do better when when you're not even a hundred percent better yourself. You know. And so, yeah, but uh, yeah, thank you for that word as well, too. Thank you, brother. God bless you, brother. Just for receiving that, just for taking that in, because I think that's a lot. Of, a lot of us, we want to find our way. A lot of us, we do want to get to know Christ, but Christ tells us to come out from amongst them and be, be separate, and I'll receive you. You hear me? So that's a good thing that the Lord is doing, because he's not going to receive us to where the tares can choke that word out of us. He wants mm -hmm. you to get around like-minded people, like he was saying, so that word can grow in you. It has a chance to manifest on good soil. Amen, brother. And I know it's hard, but that's just something you got to do. We got to push ourselves away from people to better, so the Lord can better us, so we can go back and help better them. Amen. Anybody? Anybody else? I just wanted to say this is a really good. I was just looking at the scriptures and listening to everyone speak. This is a really good word. Um, there's so much to say about this, but I just wanted, one thing I do want to say that I wanted to add to the conversation is that, um, you know, I think that when it comes to our salvation and just walking this, this walk and truly our relationship with the Lord, I think a big thing is not getting distracted. You know, I think that, I like that scripture that says, um, and this has been on my heart a lot lately, that scripture that says each person work out their own salvation. Right. Each one of us. And, and for me, that's a good, um, what do I want to say? That's a good um, viewpoint or a focus to look at for me. I like that because even though we're in the body and we're here to fellowship, uplift each other, encourage one another, this is an individual thing. Right. It's, it's it's having that intimate relationship. And, you know, I think that, especially like in the churches and stuff, I think that is, it's easy to fall into religion. It's so easy to fall into religion and the church stuff. It's easy to have that mindset, you know, and I think that we have to stay focused on our, on that personal, intimate relationship. You know, and again, talking about distractions, you know, there's so many distractions, you know, there's even distractions in the church where people get caught up on being on this auxiliary and I'm on this auxiliary and I'm headed at and, you know, pretty soon people are fighting over being the lead and the choir. You, you fight. It's all that stuff that really doesn't matter. None of that stuff has anything to do with with salvation. And the thing is, really, that's all part of religion. So the thing is, we got to keep our focus and understand that our, our, our salvation and that relationship, it's personal. And you know what, where I'm at with the Lord and, and, and what my relationship is, each one of us have our own unique relationship with the Lord. You know, although we're all worshiping, we praise the Lord, my relationship is unique to who I am because we're all unique. So all of us have our own unique relationship with the father. And I think that's something, you know, um, to stay centered and focused on. So we don't look to the left, look to the right, where we're looking at other people. And, you know, we can't go by that. We got to stay centered and focused. Where am I at with the father? Right. Can I call him father? Because see, once we get, once you get to the point where you're calling him father, that's more intimate. Mm. You know, you're not only God. Yeah. You're my God, but you're my father. That, that that's a reflection of a more intimate relationship, right? So I think for us, you know, we know we're part of this big body, but when it comes down to it, it's, it's that, that alone time, that intimate time. You know, my personal relationship with him, when I talk to him, when he speaks back, what, he, what does he say to me? You know, and it's just like our natural relationship. You know, I can't have a relationship with someone through someone else. I got to get to know that person for myself and have my own relationship with them or build a relationship with that individual. And, 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 you know, everyone may have a different type of relationship. You know, we have like different friends. We may have three or four different friends, but each friend that we have, we don't have the same exact relationship with each friend. Each friend is unique. 
I might go to this one friend and I know this is a friend that I can discuss certain things with because, you know, he just has that wisdom and that sound mind. And I know I can get some sound advice. And then I have another friend that I know that is, uh, I can have a good time with, you know, this is my friend. He's, they're joyous. They have a good vibe. So everyone's relationship is different. And I'm gonna leave it right there, but it's a good, I could go on and on. I won't, but I'm just, it's, it goes back to that individual relationship. That's something that we should be um, building on, drawing closer to the Lord, being more intimate. And it never stops. It never, our relationship is always building. We're always building, even like with our spouse, you know, we're building all the time to be more closer, to get to know each other. You know, we learn things about our spouse you know, as the years go on more and more, I know more about you today than I did when we first started off. It builds. Relationships are constantly building or should be growing. Same with the Lord. Amen. So let us reflect back to our earlier church with Stefan, who was talking about a little bit on the last and the word out of the book of Acts. And remember now the Pharisees, they were rulers of the synagogue, but the apostles have chose seven. That was in wisdom and understanding and the spirit of the Lord. That's how God moves through the spirit. So he keep pumping wisdom and understanding to the people that he have elected in the spirit. Now, these people got upset with Stephen because every time he spanked to them the wisdom of God, they were getting offended because they were in their flesh. Remember, the synagogue was comprised and made up of cliques, Church of the Libertine. That was their own clique. You have the Pharisees, the Sadducees. You have all these different cliques in the synagogue. And this is why they were upset because they were in the flesh and Stephen was in the spirit. And that's when the Paul and them, they, you know, stoned Stephen because of the wisdom that the Lord had, you know, inserted in him. So this is like my wife was just saying a minute ago, we have to be careful for these different buildings that we go in with these different cliques and they're, and they're all about clickish stuff. They're really not about the spirit and growing in the knowledge of Christ. Growing in the knowledge of Christ is what saves. It's that word that saves you. Not about looking good, being in the clique, being a part of this, a part of that, all the religiosity stuff. It's not about that at all. Hallelujah. Right here at John 8 and 29. And he have sent me is with me, Jesus said. So Jesus is saying he that sent me, talking about his father, is with him. The father have not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. When you're being faced with a situation, what side are you choosing? Are you choosing the things that always please Jesus and the father? Or are you choosing the things that please the flesh? Jesus said, my father don't leave me alone because I always do the things that please him. That's just like us. When we're faced with obstacles and situations, we always should be choosing the thing that pleases our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 At John 8, let's jump up to 19. I'm oh, sorry about that. John 8, let's jump up to um 16. And yet if my judgment, and yet if I judge, Jesus said, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. So I'm just making this because I want you know people to see. Now, although Jesus came in the express image of the Father, the Father was in the Spirit with him. The Father was in the Spirit with him. Jesus keep pointing, I'm not alone. The Father was with me. And they're both going to come make their abode, just like right here on the board, John 14, 23 through 24. Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words. Just like my wife was talking about last week, keeping his words is not running around reciting him. Keeping his words is running around every time you're faced with a situation, you're always pleasing Jesus because that's the one you choose. Keeping his word. And my father will love him and he will come unto him and make our abode. So Jesus saying that the father and him, they're going to come unto you and they're going to make their abode within you in the spirit. He that loveth me keep not my saying. So you got a lot of people running around and they think keeping the sands is to being able to recite the word. No, keeping the sands is to be every time you're faced with the situation, you're choosing the one that pleased Jesus by doing it with your actions. He that loveth me, not keep not my sands. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father would sent me. So it's going to be kind of hard to 
please the Father if we're not lining up with Jesus. Jesus is what the Father sent us in John 3, 17 to eradicate the sins in our life. The Father sent us Jesus in John 3, 16 that if we believe on him, we should not perish and have everlasting life. So if we're not following Jesus, we're not getting to know Jesus, you're not pleasing the Father at all. Can I speak on obedience? That, yes, I would just want to say something about that. The yes. obedience, and I was just thinking, you know, i rather, well, how can I, there's a verse in the Bible. You know what? It's, um, it's not, like you said, it's not trying to recite and, and of course we want to memorize the word, but it's not a competition. You know, sometimes people want to just get into that word and they want to use it as a battle. Right. You know, so that they could battle people with the word. I know more than you, and you, you know, and it, 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 it's not even about you being obedient to the word. But I gotta show people. I gotta. I got all the information. I know it all. You know. So right. the thing about it is, we have to. Because I was just thinking, you know, someone can know the the Bible frontwards and backwards. You gotta remember, Satan knows the word better than us. But the thing about it is, I rather the the thing that the Lord is looking at is, if I don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. But three scriptures, I might not know nothing but three scriptures and three verses. But guess what? I'm committed to being obedient to those three scriptures and three. I might not know nothing else, but what I do know, I'm obedient to it. I don't have to. I might not be there yet. I don't know the whole and you know whole entire New Testament or or, or I can't recite the whole whole Old Testament. But I tell you what, what I did read and what I do know. Those three verses, when something comes up in my life, I stand on that word and I be obedient and watch God work. So it's it's not about uh, quantity. It's about quality. You know, people get caught up in the numbers. And, you know, I know people, oh, I, I read the Bible three or four times. You might have read it three or four times, you know. But, you know, you read it, but are you obedient? If you read it three or four times, you got a lot that you're being held accountable for. You said you read it three or four times. <laughs> How much at all of that that you read are you being obedient to? Because it's not it's not what you know. It's what you're being obedient to and what you're actually walking and living. Uh -huh. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Sister Linda, you got anything you want to expound on that? That's good. Good word. Amen. As soon as I can get off mute. <laughs> Half the time I haven't been able to get off mute and then somebody else starts talking, so I haven't. I know I can raise my hand and you know I'm there, but um, I agree with um, Sister Michelle and um, I thank you for talking about that because it is really important that, um, and, and just like the word here tonight, I'll talk and no walk. It's very important that we walk mm -hmm. as well. That action, like you were saying, Brother Derek, it's the action behind it um yeah and and um brother melvin i just wanted there was one time when you were talking about <clears throat> different people that um you've encountered and um and they they have said something or preached something and you check it out for yourself that is very good because you know, that we, we need to be able to not just recite the word, but we need to be able to back that up because the, the, the other thing was my mind's just trying to go back to all the different things I was thinking of before. Um, oh, no, I just lost it. Oh, my goodness. Um but, oh, yeah, so we need to be very careful about false prophets. You know, we've got to know them by their first few fruits because, and the only way we can do that is to know the word, right? We've got to know what the first fruits are. Um, so it's just real important. Um, and um, I just wanted to say amen to, to everything you guys are talking about. Amen. Thank you for sharing, sister. You're welcome. Yeah, that's very well important. Yeah, me and this this mute button, we we have a battle that goes on every week. <laughs> they don't want you to get it out, huh? I know it's Satan. I know it is. 
He's just going, I'm not going to let you push that mute button or unmute. (laughs) Just joking. Now, remember, like I was talking about earlier, when I was in that natural carnal spirit, the way I looked at love was different. That's why we have to have our encounter. So God can start restoring us in the right way in the spirit. So we can start looking at things from the right perspective. Look right here, 1 Corinthians at 2 and 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God. See, the natural carnal man is not going to be able to receive the spirit things of God. That's why you need a man sent from God, because God has uh, allowed his spirit to be open. God has poured Jesus in him and allowed his spirit to be open. So now he can pour spiritual things from heaven and let you see what's to come and also unlock the mysteries of his word in you. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. See, he can't even know them because they're spiritually discerned. But that's why we have to know them by their fruits, because if we partake of the Holy Ghost, then we'll be able eternally, internally, in our spirit, in our cognitive, we'll be able to discern, you know, things that people are there of the Spirit. Are they working in the spirit or are they just lying in the spirit? You know, are they playing games in the spirit? The spirit unlocks that all for us. Last scripture right here. Amen. Luke 8 at 19. Then came to him his mother and his brethren. Talking about Jesus. He was preaching. And his mother and his brethren came to him. And they could not come at him for the press. There were so many people they couldn't get to him because of the press. And it was told him by certain what said, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. He answered and said unto them, my brother and my mother and my mother and my brother are these that hear the word of God and do it. Man, that's a powerful statement right there. Because he was faced with his carnality family opposed Mm -hmm. to his spiritual family. And he makes the difference. And we're desiring to be in the spirit When God is tugging on our heart, there's no way we should be with the carnal. You're not going to be able to grow. You're not going to be able to allow what God wants to do in your life to manifest hanging around those type of people. When Jesus was faced with the question, Jesus was faced with the question, who do people say I am? Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias. But Jesus told them, who do you say I am? See, it's personal. Mm -hmm. Personal, yeah. So you don't want to be hanging out with somebody that Jesus ain't called, and you and that individual in the carnal is keeping you from manifesting yourself in the spirit because you're yeah. attracted to what's on the outside instead of allowing God to move you on the inside like He's doing. Don't let Him stuck. Don't let Him stymie you because if He stop you from growing, then what if God call Him the next year and He leave you alone and get away from you? Mm. Oh, that's a cold one. Mm. Yeah. Amen. What's amazing to me is that when when we go through the word, um, it's amazing at how many different ways in different books that Jesus will say the same thing to us so that we can get individually people to understand what's going on. It just uh, that just amazes me every time I run across Things like um, that you were just talking about, Brother Derek. Um, you know, it's it's important for us to know, but it's also important that we pay attention because there's so many different ways that Jesus will tell us um, things so that we can understand it and develop that personal relationship. Right. right? That's the Holy Spirit. Thank you. God for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise yeah. God. Mm-hmm. Can I say something about obedience? I'm back on obedience again. I, I wanted to say something about obedience. I just wanted to share something. One thing that I discovered is, um, you know, there is power. This Just from my personal experience, there's power in obedience. And I think that's why there are so many temptations. That's why there's, um, you know, the enemy always want to get us to do our own thing because you know what? There's power in submission. You know, when we're obedient, when we're actually like different things come up in your, in your life, 
or certain circumstances. And right at that moment, you think about the word. And instead of doing what your flesh want to do or what you usually would do, you remember the word and you, you, you do it. I remember, you know, and I'm just thinking every time I'm obedient to the spirit, I can literally feel the Holy Spirit in me. I, and I, inside, I'm like, ooh, I passed that. Because that's a test, right? Different things come our way to see, wow, are we going to respond? And you know what? As you begin to be obedient to the word of God, it starts to become normal. It starts to become easier. Because you'd be like, you know what? Oh, you would be saying to yourself, you know, oh, I passed that. And that might have been something that you really were struggling with. Because you know within yourself how you normally would respond or how your flesh wants you to respond. But you said, you know what? No, I'm standing on the word. I remember I, I read that word and study the other night. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to trust you, God, and I'm going to do what you told me to do, what the word said. And every time I would put the word into practice and actually do it, I could feel the Holy Spirit moving inside of me. Mm -hmm. and, and I continue to do it. It strengthened me. And that's how I, I begin to get strong in the Lord because it's you taking off your flesh right. and you're beginning when you're actually being obedient, you're beginning to walk in the spirit. And then after that, the more I begin to do that, that's when I begin to speak in tongues and I got the Holy, Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the, the Lord filled me. It was through my obedience. I could literally feel a change inside of me every time I would pass a test. Right, right. I mean, every time I would pass a test, some of them tests was hard too. Right. you know, right. certain things come up, some, you know. You know, you, you, you know, you got a mouth, you can get back, but you know what? If somebody cussing you out, talking to you crazy, you know how you normally respond, right? You know, you got that mouthpiece. You can say some things back, but you humbled yourself. Right. You said, Lord, I'm going to let you fight my battles. You start playing that word back. And mm -hmm. you know what? Like I said, some of these tests is going to be hard, but when you walk away, you feel so victorious. It ain't that. Oh, and you feel that Holy spirit. Cause the Holy spirit is coming. It's like the Lord saying you passed my child. The Lord, like giving you a pat on your back. And each time through my walk, that's when you're growing. You're growing in the Lord because now I'm putting the word. I'm actually making it. I've decided to put this word in my life. I'm going to be the word. I'm walking in this word. And you know what? There will be a change. That's how I got the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Ghost. I, I could actually literally feel the spirit just like something inside of me. Every time I would pass, it's like my soul. I could just, ooh, I could just feel it. So I just, want to stress and encourage everyone to be obedient in the word. Whatever you know, be obedient to the word. Practice it. Do it. Just do it. Even if you can't see it, stand on your faith and just think about that word. Say, this is I remember this was in the word. And whatever that circumstance is, be obedient to what the word said we're supposed to do. And you, a oh man, it's going to be powerful. Amen. Anybody got any last words they want to study today? Amen. Anybody got any last words? Mm -mm. All talk and no walk. Remember, let us be about walking. And then it'll match up to our talking. We're deceiving people when we're speaking about the gospel of things. And then people are looking at our actions and they're not lining up. One thing about the carnality is they know if you're walking like them, they know you ain't about what you're talking about. One thing about the spirit, when you're in the spirit, just like at the sons of Silva, that the spirit said to these people who were trying to cast out demons in Paul's name, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? <laughs> right. So Ooh. you can't fool the spirit. The hear the spirit know who you is. So yes, you're walking around there playing and faking. You ain't doing nothing but fooling yourself. Exactly. And they left them scarred and butt naked running up out of there. Remember that. And everybody that's seen that, they went and the Lord, the word grew more and more mightily. And they brought everything that they've learned, all their books and everything, and they burnt it and counted up the cost of how much they spent looking for the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. His word saved. Just continue on in it. Like Jesus said in John 8 and 33, 30, at 30 through 33, if you continue on in my word, then you are my disciple. And the truth will set you free. His word will set us free. Hallelujah. Any last words, anybody, before we wrap it up? Good study. Like we always say in Romans 10, 9, confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart that God raised Jesus on the third day. Thou shalt be saved. And go and get baptized after that because Jesus let us know 
And John 3, 5, that man cannot enter into the kingdom of God unless he's been born by water and by spirit. It's important that we get born again. We can't enter into the kingdom unless we're born by water and by spirit. Hallelujah. We're just thankful for you all today. This is a good study. Continue to keep, you know, the Lord in your heart. Continue to keep manifesting, taking yourself to studies, different studies, having your own study, and letting God know you want in. Hallelujah. Pray us out, Brother Melvin. God bless you, brother. Thank you, Father God. I come to you this evening, Lord. Um, in, in awe and in gratefulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for everything, Lord. We thank you for all blessings seen and unseen, Lord. We thank you for this, this worship session, Lord, this Bible study, Lord. And I'm just grateful to be able to make it, Lord. Lord, I ask you to please take all diseases and sicknesses away from everybody on this platform, or all of our loved ones as well, Lord. I ask you to please put a hedge of protection around us, Lord, and strengthen us, Lord, from the inside out and in your liking, Lord. Thank you, Father. Again, with you, Lord, we are everything without you. We are nothing. In Jesus' beautiful name we pray. Amen. Good prayer, brother. Amen. You guys have a good, blessed week, rest of the week, and keep your mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You guys, you guys have a good evening. God bless each and every one of you. God bless. Amen. Thank you, brother. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, appreciate those prayers. And you guys, God bless you, and you Keep safe during the weekend. Keeping yes. God's word. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay.